Nah, bro. If that was me, I'd probably suck it. Whoa. Nah, wait, oh, Whoa. What? Nah. Oh, my food is here. I'll be right back. Yo, what did he mean by that? Bro, they messed up my order. What'd you order? Bro, I just asked for a burger with nothing on it. And what they put on it? Bro, there's nothing on it. Freelancing is one of the most popular ways people can make money, and it's easy to understand why. I currently work a nine to five, and when Monday morning rolls around, I strongly consider faking my own death and moving to Mexico just to get out of work for a day. At your typical workplace, you gotta deal with annoying customers, annoying bosses, and human resources telling you, oh, your joke about drunk driving wasn't workplace appropriate. With freelancing, you don't have to deal with any of that. And in 2024, it's easier than ever to go into business for yourself. Whether it be driving for Uber, doing DoorDash, taking photos, or the countless other things out there to do, the best part about freelancing is in the name, free, as in freedom. Whether you wanna pick up a side hustle for a little extra cash, or you're someone who's looking to get into freelancing full time, there's plenty of opportunity out there. Because in 2024, we don't wanna be broke. We wanna have motion. And freelancing will have you posting spread pics for all your haters on Instagram in no time. I've had my fair share of experiences as a freelancer because I used to be a broke college student. And I can now proudly say that I am no longer in college. And even with a full-time schedule as a student and an on-campus job, I was still able to find time to do things like DoorDash or editing videos. And that one time I dressed up as Spider-Man for a kid's birthday party. Now I'm not gonna sit here and promise you that you'll make yourself rich off freelancing and be living in a penthouse somewhere in lower Manhattan, but if you do it right, you'll be able to earn an income. So if you're like me and you're tired of eating saltwater soup for dinner because you get paid bi-weekly and you spent $53 on a knife in Valorant, then freelancing could be a great option for you. Now, if you've ever gone on youtube.com to look for advice on getting into freelancing, you may have come across a lot of videos like these, where people are like, oh, I make 30K a month freelancing and here's how you do it. But one thing all of these videos have in common is that they never actually show themselves applying for the job. That's because if you've ever tried this method, you'll realize that getting a freelance job is low key, excuse me, high key difficult, especially when you're like 20 trying to do this. That's because a lot of the time, freelancing is about doing a job that everyone needs, but nobody wants to pay for. For example, do you remember those bird scooters that one day started popping up all over your city? Well, that company just filed for bankruptcy. Want to know why? Because a really popular freelance job was going around your city and picking up used bird scooters and bringing them home and charging them. But once COVID hit and people stopped going outside, the pay for charging scooters wasn't that good anymore. So people stopped doing that and now you just had a bunch of dead scooters lying all around the city. And because of that, cities just started banning them completely. So if you actually want to find a freelancing job, you're going to want to start with a trusted website like Fiverr or Indeed or a place where you can just sign up for the job directly like Uber or DoorDash. A lot of people recommend Upwork too, but I think Upwork is asking for way too much. I mean, they want you to upload a resume and some places even want to interview you. Like bro, we're freelancers. We're here to do a job and get paid. I don't want to join your team. I work alone. I'm a solo act here. Also, I'm 23 and they want 10 years of experience in editing TikToks. Bye. So the good thing about freelancing is that you get to do things on your own. Work on your own time, at your own pace, and make your own money. However, if you've ever done any freelance work, you'll know that there are a lot of scams out there too. It's sad to say, but there are a lot of people out there willing to take advantage of a young street gentleman grinding for his bread out here. So you need to be wary of all these scammers that pop into your LinkedIn DM saying they have a great and exciting opportunity for you. But fortunately, most of these scams are very easy to spot. One is if they're weirdly formal. Like, not just being professional, but they sound like a literal AI when they speak to you. Like this message I got on LinkedIn once. There is no way you're not about to scam me out of the $37 in my bank account right now. Blocked. Number two is to check the reviews. Just like 40-year-old Karens leave bad reviews about the customer service at your local McDonald's, other freelancers work jobs and leave reviews about their employers. So if you're feeling iffy about a certain opportunity, a quick Google search can expose these frauds and save you from getting scammed. Oh, 
but Suburban Will, what about fake reviews? Fake reviews are actually pretty common for scams. When I was in college, there was a certain apartment complex that would give out free pizza if you wrote them a positive review on Google, allegedly. But fake reviews are usually pretty easy to spot because they'll be like one sentence long or all be posted around the same time or just be written in really bad English, since the review was probably written by a bot anyway. And three, if it just looks shady. Look, you know when something looks suspicious, if some guy came up to you asking for your mother's maiden name and the three numbers on the back of your credit card, that should raise a few eyebrows. Make sure you ask questions about the job and if they can't give you a straight answer, then dip out before it's too late. Okay, so now that you've created your account, posted a job, and avoided getting scammed out of everything you own, someone has finally requested your services. Congratulations, it's almost time to get paid and finally be rewarded for all of your skill and talent. Now the only thing you have to do now is the job. And the key here is to do the job well, because what you want is a good review, and possibly, if you're lucky, a recommendation. You want your job to be done so well that they go and tell other people how good of a job you did. For example, when I was Spider-Man for that kid's birthday party, after my two hours were up, Spider-Man can't just hop into his 2004 Honda Civic and drive away. So what did I do? I made a heroic exit. I sprinted into the woods, jumped over the fence, and when the coast was clear, hopped in my car and drove home. The key to making money while freelancing is keeping a job lined up. Some places do this for you like Uber and DoorDash, but if you're fully independent, you have to build up a solid book of business, and you do that by being reliable and consistent. Now comes the fun part, getting paid. And as a freelancer, sometimes it can be hard to set your prices. You wanna make good money, but you don't wanna overcharge and risk people not wanting to buy your stuff. And in my experience, there are only two types of clients, low ballers and big spenders. Low ballers are people who wanna get as much work out of you as they possibly can while constantly trying to talk you down on pricing. For example, when I was working as a video editor, there were always people who would ask me to edit their six hour Twitch streams down into a 30 minute video. Then when I say, okay, that's gonna cost you about $100, they act like you just handed them divorce papers. But on the other hand, you have your big spenders and they give you all of the details about the project and what they want from you. And when you go to quote them a high price, they just go, okay, do you take Venmo? And the first time this happened to me, I nearly told this man I loved him. Big spenders are like the best thing that can ever happen to you as a freelancer because they're willing to pay you what you're worth. It lets you know that you're not overcharging people, and if you do a good job, they're likely to recommend you to other people willing to pay that same price. So here's some quick advice on setting your prices. One, take a look at what other people are charging for similar work, and on top of that, try and find out why they're charging that much. Is it because they're using expensive equipment or maybe they're adding extra fees for travel? Whatever it is. Another piece of advice is to consider what you think you're worth. For example, when I first started editing videos, I was pretty bad at it. So back then I was only charging people like 20 bucks to make a video for them. But over time I improved and eventually I worked up to the point where people were paying me $125 per video. It's all based on how much you think you deserve. Just don't do something crazy like charging people $500 for a TikTok. And that's pretty much it. Sign up, do the job, get paid, and try not to get scammed. If there's anything I want you to take away from this video, it's that in 2024, literally anything is possible. So if this is the year you decide your nine to five is harshing your vibe a little too much, there's plenty of opportunity out there so you don't have to feel stuck where you're at. Thanks for watching the video. I'm trying to be more consistent with the vids this year. So whether you're new or you've been here, we're going up this year. Peace.